We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Brit Says Season 3. And who, who say? Who say? Who say? I'm back. I'm here on the quarantine. Tip. Bring y'all a topic. Because like I said, I want to be more personal. Um... See what happens when you're more personal. Happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, yeah, day 8063 of quarantine, and I have my good and I have my bad days. See, you know, the top of my head is cut off intentionally. Y'all should see these new growth on these braids, honey. Y'all would unsubscribe if you saw the new growth on these braids, <laughs> and yeah. Um, our stay, ahead, stay at home order has been extended to June 6th, so I'm in here like swimwear, you feel me? And yeah, I hope you guys are doing great. I'm doing fine, can't complain. And yeah, let's jump into it. So I picked a topic, so I have like a lot of like topics like in the cut or whatever. So this one is called Over It. And basically, when is a relationship officially over, right? It's, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we have a tendency to not know when to go. And, you know, I've been in situations where I didn't know when to go. So I felt like, why not talk about it? And here we go. You know, before every topic, what we like to do, expands our minds. Expand your mind, expand your mind, expand your mind. So, in an article written on the dailydot.com titled, Why Girls Never Want Nice Guys and Why Is It Too Late When They Do, When They Do, written by Samantha Grosso, states despite these indicators it's up to the people in the relationship to make the relationship that they want Darnell says a relationship is about finding the partner or partners hello who share your values and who are at least a similar page on a similar page as you she says you may not have all your needs met by one person and may outsource some of those needs to other people such as friends or family it doesn't mean the marriage is over just because one of you doesn't enjoy hiking, Darnell says. Don't be afraid to outsource some of those things. You can get everything. You can't get everything from just one partner. She also says that some couples are more comfortable with a relationship closer to those of roommates. Some find it easier to tread water in a relationship that lacks an emotional connection. And that's okay. That's just a reality. I do what I do enjoy in this article is that they said that um just because somebody doesn't like hiking doesn't mean that you know the marriage is over. You can outsource those things from um other people besides your partner, right? Which is true. If your partner doesn't like like he said hiking, go hiking with your friends that like hiking. I'm quite sure if you like hiking you got friends that like hiking. You must be going on hiking trips on with hiking groups. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it is what it is. You know. So I like that from the article. But um, how how do you know when it's over? You know. Um, the first thing I think you gotta know is how do you know a relationship is good, right? Because it has to be good for you to know, oh, this is getting bad. For you to say it's over, correct? Unless it was over from the start, but that's a different topic, right? <laughs> Sometimes it is over from the start, but... um, So, how is your relationship when it's good? Um, For me, the communication is there. Communication is hard in every relationship. I don't think communication is ever really that perfect, but at least it's kind of there. Um... The love is there. That's top priority, right? Um, the attraction is there. Because you could lose attraction to somebody. The growth is there. When I say the growth is there, it's like you want to grow. You still want to build with this person. Like 
this is somebody you want to get a house with this is somebody you want to live with this is somebody you want to build a family with like that growth aspect is still there like i want to grow with this person if that aspect is not there then i don't see no point and you you that should be when you know it's over when you're like oh my god i would never marry him or her or whatever i would never have kids with this person like hello um if y'all can't communicate y'all can't talk can i barely talk you know those are things that kind of determine that you know it's not good now sometimes in a relationship it could just be a moment right where y'all had a really really bad argument and now y'all not talking now y'all not communicating now y'all being stupid. And that's what you gotta really know. Like, am I being stupid? Not like stupid. I don't wanna say stupid. Am I in my feelings? Or am I... Is it really over? Like... And... You kinda gotta know what is the argument. And why... And why did this argument escalate, right? Because... Let me think. You can have an argument about, I asked you to put that piece of paper away. I asked you to put this, this piece of paper away and you didn't put it away, right? That's a, that's slight work, that's slight work argument, right? But is it deeper that he didn't put the paper away? Are you saying that he doesn't listen? He does what he wants. The way he's treating this piece of paper is the way he treats you. He treats you, he does whatever you want, he wants with you. Is it deeper than really that he didn't put the paper away? Because sometimes you really will have an argument with your significant other because he didn't put something away. But that's really what the argument is based off of. And then you got the arguments where you're not really pressed that he didn't put the piece of paper away. You, you just mad because it's like, why you don't listen? Why you do what you do? Why you think you could run all over me? Why you think you could do da 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 You feel me? Like... It's more deeper than what we think it is. You know what I'm saying? So those are other things that you kind of got to really like determine. You kind of got to like nitpick and figure out like, am I really mad over this piece of paper? And that's where communication comes in because I feel like a lot of times too, when a lot of relationships hit its peak, like we hit the end, is that a lot of things wasn't discussed from early on. Or it wasn't discussed the way it should have been discussed. And when I say that, I mean in a sense of... How can I explain you? Like, the first time your partner... I don't want to use that as an example because that's like... I'm trying to think. I was going to say cheated, but cheated is... That's a different topic. We'll, we'll jump into that. The first time your partner didn't do something you didn't like. Like, it could be anything. Like, he just did something you didn't like. Did you really address it the way you should have addressed it? Or did you, like, slightly address it? You know what I'm saying? Like, how did you address that that topic? You get what I'm saying? Like, did you really, really... I don't know if my phone was not disturb. <laughs> did you really, really nip that in the butt? You catch my drift, like... Or did you let it rock? Because that's what we do sometimes in the beginning of a relationship, right? We kind of want it to be perfect. We want it to be starry and beautiful and pretty and, and and freaking stars and fucking rainbows, right? So when our partner does something we don't like, kind of in the beginning of the relationship, we don't really speak on it because we kind of like how it is, right? We don't want to, like, scare that person away or, you know. Um, and I get that. But I think it's all about how you say stuff. It's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. So if he does something, you feel like... The, the ideas I'm thinking of, to me, are just red flags. So I was going to say, like, if he does something where he get a little angry too fast. Like, to me, if, if me and you been dating is the beginning of a relationship and you're already getting angry, I feel like you're a red flag. Like, wave the flag. Like, I, I can't think of, like, good, good examples <laughs> of instances where... You know, you gotta be like, hmm, like, like, what's the instance where, I mean, if I'm 
dating a guy and he get angry fast and we've been only dating for like a month or two. I'm I'm sorry. That's a red flag, honey. Like it gotta be something small, like Okay, I got one. What if y'all add dinner and he he eats off of your plate? Like y'all been dating for three months. And maybe that's not something you like. Like you don't like him touching your food or you know people like that they might be invasive naturally. So in the beginning of the relationship, you might not say, oh, don't put your, your, your fork in my plate, blah, 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 blah. But if that's how you feel, you don't like that, then say something. Just be like, hey, um, or, or be funny. I like to be funny with stuff when I'm serious. I'll be like, uh-uh, I know you didn't just put your fork in my plate. Don't put your fork in my plate. And he'll be like, you dead serious? I'll be like, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> and I'm be dead ass though. I be like, nah, I really don't like that. And he like, what? Why? Cause it's my food. Like you have to ask. Like you know, just be cute with it, be funny with it. Like I don't know. I think cause we don't nip certain things in the butt early. Um, that's when we don't know. You know that that's why that communication is not there early in. I think it's all about how you say stuff. Just say it with a little funniness, a little. Like, I don't know. That's what I would do. What determines a good and bad relationship? Hmm. Are relationships subjective? That's a good question. I don't think... Hmm. Are relationships subjective? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think relationships are subjective. Are they though? Cause like for instance, I hate talking about people, but like you say, I hate talking about people, but like sometimes for instance, like DJ Khaled wife, right? We be laughing or like chicklet dot AF or whatever. You know that couple that like little Instagram or YouTube couple, whatever couple they are. Like you see how like sometimes like DJ Khaled's wife was kind of like rude to him. Like, don't fucking play with me, blah, 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 blah. Or chicklick dot AF. Is it AF? I don't know. The the girlfriend is kind of rude to the boyfriend. And even though they playing, she be calling him a bitch and stuff. Like, even though they playing, I'm not sure if they playing. I'm not sure if they serious. I'm pretty sure DJ Khaled's wife is not playing, though. Um, I think that's toxic. Like, even though... I don't know if they're playing. I don't think so. To me, that's toxic. But for maybe people who watch it think that's good. They think stuff like that is funny. Like, yeah, me and my man do that. I be dead ass telling him, like, stop fucking playing with me, bitch. Like, I don't think that's healthy at all. Like, I, I don't. I don't think that's subjective. I think a lot of people think that that's unhealthy. I, I, I don't stand by that, right? So... I wonder though, like, if people were to like rate their relationship, right, and be like, I would want to know how many people think that it's good that she talks to him like that, either or DJ Khaled wife or um the girl from Chicklet Instagram. I'll tag it below or whatever. Um, do people think that's appropriate? Like, how many people kind of agree with that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, stuff like that is toxic. Um. Do couples argue? Because a lot of people want to say, like, if a couple relationship, if you're in a relationship and y'all argue so much, is it a bad relationship? Okay, let's get into that. Um, if y'all argue every day, that's toxic. If y'all argue once a week, it depends on the situation, because sometimes you could be just be having a bad month with your man. Or just a bad year. And the next year is better. Like, for real. Um, it's, it's so... And you gotta know what the argument is about, too. Right? If y'all arguing over infidelity... Why you keep talking to these other girls? Why you don't want to be with me? That's just sleeping, please. Like, that's not, like, a conversation piece. If you're arguing over finances, and when I say finances, I mean not 
you the caretaker of somebody where you're like, you don't never pay for anything. I have to pay for everything. Uh, leave them or her. Leave them. Finances is when shit is getting real and you like, oh my God, I need you. You, you was with somebody who had a job or they was working and now they're trying to get on their feet and it's hard and now you're arguing over like, I've been picking up the slack and I'm tired of it. You need to do harder. and That's different. Right? Now y'all talking about finances. Uh, yeah, you want to buy a new TV and your husband doesn't. Now y'all have an argument as to why y'all need a new TV. Da, da, da. Those are petty financial arguments. Right? Those are those are not even those are disagreements. Those are debates. Like, But sometimes they can escalate. Right? That's not a big deal to me. I think those are fixable. Those are things you can get through. Those are things you can move past. If you're arguing and you're telling your man, like, stop cheating on me. Why you keep fucking other girls? Why you got another girl pregnant? It's over. Like, that's, that's not an argument for me. Like, that's not debatable. Like, arguments usually have two sides that can be either right or wrong, right? A guy or girl cheating on you in a relationship is not really open for discussion, honestly. Like how how can we how can we make room for this? How? Exactly. So if y'all having those type of arguments, I think it's just it's just over. Like it's 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 just it's time to go, sensei. Like for real for real. Like you might as well just end it there. Um and I think for most people, it's hard. It's really hard to say it's over. You know, a lot of people struggle with that. With that, we all, well, not like we, well, I, I will hope we've all been there where it was like you didn't know how to leave. I've been there plenty of times. But then when you do it, because at the time, what it is at the time is you feel like this person is your everything. And if you leave him, who are you going to find next? That's at least how I feel when I'm in that phase of, like, not wanting to leave. I'm like, oh, I really like him. I don't think it's going to get no better than him. I'm not ready to go sex anything anything can play like a key role in me like not wanting to leave like anything can play a key role like it's usually that though like oh i gotta start fresh i'm never gonna find nobody i give up you kind of don't want to give up you kind of don't want to start over and that's really why like for me it used to be hard to like be done with that person because it's like really then who's next after this and and that's even like with quarantine the real thing that bothers us with the quarantine and coronavirus is that we of the uncertainty is that we don't know when we could go back outside we don't know when life is going to be normal again right and that's kind of like what it is too i feel like when a relationship is over it's like when you leave you're like Okay, this is something I'm used to, especially if it's a long relationship, right? If you was with that person five plus years, you with somebody five plus years, you so accustomed to that person, you like, okay, so this is done. So what's next if I leave him? What's gonna be in my journey? How are days gonna be without him? Um, like, what what would my life be like after this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. What's next for me? Like, you don't know. The uncertainty is what makes you scared to leave. Um, and I get it. I really do. I get it. 100%. You, you really don't know what's next, what's coming up, what's plans for your future. You don't know. And um, it, it, it's scary. It really is scary. And that's why you're scared to leave sometimes i'll be honest i know some of y'all like really that's why girls don't want to leave yeah because you don't know you really don't know 
or maybe you know you that bitch maybe you know you that real the real dun da da and you can get another man right but in your head you're like i'm gonna just get another man he gonna be just like him or whatever the case may be maybe you've been through so many rough patches rough relationships and you like i might as well stick it out with his ass because it ain't gonna get no better than him right some of us think that way and for me you know if you're watching this and you know you gotta go just go god gonna figure it out for you you're gonna find somebody new things are gonna be better things are gonna work out and and guess what i'm gonna be honest the next guy may not be the, the right guy even after the one that you just left and that's fine just keep working through it just keep pushing through it everything gonna work out that's how i look at it like the the big thing is like being single some people can't be single that always gotta be in a relationship like you can't not 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 be in a relationship like girl look being single you know is a dope experience it is really like just getting to really learn yourself and being able to figure things out on your own and go out to eat by yourself go to the movies by yourself do things on your own there's nothing wrong with being single but there is a market of women who cannot be single like they really have to have somebody at all times if even if it's not just a relationship they have to have a man at all times now do i understand like you know you you like getting d all year round period i get that but i feel like you should be able to even not have to do that honestly i really do feel like that like you should be able to be able to take a break like for real talk like even if it's two months or a month or three months like you should be able to like let it breathe down there like honestly you should be able to do that be able to like let it breathe let it get some ear because your vagina deserves a break just like you okay there's nothing wrong with being single and a lot of the girls don't like that they like if i leave him they like having a backup plan you know how like people won't leave a job until they have a new job lined up that's how some women treat relationships like i'm not leaving him and so I have somebody lined up. A new person on my line. Like, there has to be a lineup. And, um... Yeah, I feel like... Y'all you, you, gotta learn to, to figure yourself out. I know, especially at... Like, once you hit around 30, everybody's like, oh, I don't want to be single at 30. Uh, shut up. If you... Let me tell you something. This is my theory. If you don't put in that work that real work to really like love yourself and be yourself and be by yourself i don't think you can find true love i really don't i'm i'm really one of those believers who believe if you don't love yourself you can never be loved i am a true believer in that like how can you be loved if you don't love yourself it's impossible think about it logically because if you don't love yourself nobody can respect you does that make sense? Do y'all like get my logic, my theory? Like, if you don't love yourself, you'll get in a relationship and let somebody treat you like shit because you don't even fuck with yourself. You don't even love yourself like that. Like, you don't even get you as a person. Like, you barely fucking with you. You feel me? Like, you don't even really deal with you like that. You don't bang with yourself like that. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, so how are you going to get in a relationship and expect a man to love you and respect you if you don't respect yourself you catch my drift like it's impossible um so i do think being single in some ways is a very important aspect of life um and building relationships and long-term relationships and it's important just to like and when you got that time to yourself especially after like a breakup or just ending it with somebody you get that time to really think you know what i'm saying like you can think like what did i do wrong in that relationship what did he do wrong what will i not tolerate in my next relationship why did he really get on my nerves like you can really figure out what it is exactly that 
you need to do better. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can really dig, dig deep and find out the tea. Like, about yourself. And then that'll help you on your, you know, your next relationships and, and you know, help guide you to find, um, you know, what it is that you want in your next relationship. Um, when things get bad in a relationship, can it be fixed? Hmm. I think it can. I do. I, I believe in that. I believe that. But that's if you want to do the work. And, and let's talk about doing the work. Let's talk about that. And to me, this is when you know you have a strong relationship. Is when y'all both want to do the work. Right? Because when things get bad, y'all both could leave. But then it could be like, y'all both kind of don't want to leave. And y'all both want to kind of figure it out. Right? And it takes two to build a relationship. Like, I feel like sometimes relationships, when things get bad, it's just that one person that's, like, kind of, like, dragging the relationship along. Are y'all both trying to drag this shit along? Like, I mean that in a good way. Like, are we both trying to fix this? Like, let's try to fix this together. Like, are we both doing this together? Um, and I think even if you, if your spouse or whomever is willing to, to try to work something out, that speaks volumes because some people are like, I ain't doing no fucking therapy. I'm not doing this. Girls too, like, if you want to leave me, let me done. Like, just leave. Like, bye. Like, like, I think a bad relationship can be fixed. Like, it's just about doing the work. Like, it's like, and, and, and knowing when it's really bad. Like, can you bounce back from cheating? I really don't think anybody ever really gets over it. I think it's going to always consistently be brought up. But some people move on from it as long as the person doesn't do it again. And I do think that somebody could cheat and not cheat again. Because you know how they say once a cheater, always a cheater. Is that true? You know, one of my big things I want to do is like really like get a cheater on a podcast like somebody who's cheated on multiple girlfriends or guys i mean a girl that cheated on her in any relationship like i want to get in tune just see what they are mentally emotionally physically why they toxic like that's something i really want to get into the mind of a cheater or a past cheater or whatever they want to be because you know how people who cheat don't want to be a cheater <laughs> like you cheated but you don't want to claim the title of being a cheater but um yeah um is cheating something you move past um it's hard and you gotta make sure that person don't do it again and like I said is, is once a cheater always a cheater a thing I can't speak on that I, I really wouldn't know um that's that's a finicky topic that's a finicky topic. You could, I feel like, I don't know about men, but I feel like with women, they could cheat once, cheat once and probably never do that again. They're going to be like, but Brittany, you're a girl. You would say that. I don't know. Or maybe how y'all feel if you was with somebody and they was always cheating, 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 cheating right? But then they really, do you believe they could really stop? Let's say they were like one of those chronic cheaters, like they cheated with like four different people. But then could you get back with them and believe like, yo, the fourth girl or guy was the last person? Y'all get what I'm saying? Like, could you really believe them after they cheated four times? Some people would look at you like a clown if you go back to somebody that cheated on you four times, though, honestly. Like, when does it stop, you know? Um, cheating is such a unique topic. Like, when I'm talking about when is it over, I'm talking about... I ain't even thinking about infidelity. I'm not even thinking about cheating. I'm thinking about when you argue too much, when you fall out of love, 
when y'all just at y'all wits end, like, when y'all not doing the nasty no more. Like, I heard, like, you know, married couples, they stop doing the nasty. I know I'm engaged. I'm just like, is that a thing? It could happen. I don't know not about not doing it anymore, but I know about not doing it as much. Um, I don't know. What do you feel? I mean, do you some, sometimes know from the beginning it will not work, but you stay in the relationship? We, we kind of touched on that in the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. You can meet a guy. Maybe you think he mad cute. Maybe you think he got money. Maybe you, you like just something about him. Just one thing. It just be one thing, girl. And then now you're like, you know. He is kind of cute. But he do be acting kind of by me. But it could probably work. But it's probably not because I don't like bums. And then you dead stay with this man for the long haul. Like, you be knowing sometimes from the beginning, like, this shit ain't gonna work. Like, have I ever dated somebody in the beginning? I was like, this shit not gonna work. Yeah. Yeah, I have. And I just kept rolling with the punches. From the beginning, though? Yeah, I did. Definitely. I have also dated where I thought it was going to work and it didn't work. Well, we all do that. That was a dumb thing to say. Yeah, sometimes I be... <laughs> That's going to have to stay there. Sometimes I be... Um... But I'm going to put the word over here though. Because my laptop is right there. Um, Sometimes you kind of like... uh, Like this is when I was younger though. Honestly, that's young girl shit. Like, I'll date somebody and be like, uh, I don't really like this, 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 A, B, and C about him, but I'll stick around because he kind of cool. We hang out. It'd be all right. Like, but I knew, like, he ain't going to be the guy I marry. He ain't going to be somebody I want kids with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, I definitely know things wasn't going to work from the beginning. And that's, that's the worst part is when you date somebody, you know, and it's not going to work in the beginning because... When you know it's not going to work in the beginning, you basically wasting your time and you might end up catching feelings for somebody you know ain't shit from the start. And then when you get into that zone where you're dating somebody who you know ain't shit from the start, that's when things go haywire. Um, that's young girl stuff. I don't know if y'all still doing stuff like that. I can't relate, obviously. But I'm just saying, even before him, even before for me, I've been jumped off that wave, like, kind of. <laughs> um, oh, interesting. It says, can kids change the idea of leaving a relationship? I think I wanted somebody on that podcast, and that's why I wanted to ask that question. Um. I don't know. I feel like we live in a time though. Like our parents. What is that? Baby boomers? Oh, who's the generation before them? I don't remember. But I know the generation before like my parents. Like the. I want to say they called baby boomers. I'm not sure. Um, They were big on that. Like just keep making it work for the kids. Then as time progressed. We kind of wasn't into that. And for me, I see, you know, I'm not saying it's right. Well, shit, if it don't work, it don't work. But, um, yeah, I see a lot of people, you know, leave relationships. We see single mothers every day. We see um single fathers. It's, if it ain't working, it ain't working. Like, I see people, you know, my age that's ready to leave. Some people they don't want to be with. And it might be kids involved. And that's just what it is. Like, I do think in the beginning, yeah, you'd be like, yo, I got a kid by them. And sometimes, like I said, you'd be like, who's going to date me? And I got a kid. I think by this, like, by, like, 30 to and up, if you got a kid, you can definitely find another relationship. Because it's like, you kind of, like, not that you expect it, but you like, all right, this person got a kid. 
or whatever the case may be. Like, you kind of, like, in and out. But I do think it, 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 you won't be scared to leave that person. But I think it will be hard for you not to go back to somebody you had kids with. That's easy. That's easy. If you a dude, that's easy coochie. If you a girl, that's easy penis. Light cheese. <laughs> and y'all already co-parenting, bitch. I mean... But if it ain't working, it ain't working. That's that's a hard topic. A hard topic. I don't know. Um, if it ain't working, it ain't working. I know. That's just how I look at it. Um... That was that one is a hard question for me. I would have to like ask somebody how they feel, but um yeah. Um just what I would say for a key, because I told y'all if it's not like these episodes are not fully planned, it's gonna be short. But um if it's not working, it's not working. And when you know it's over, you know it's over. Like I know I hear stories about like married couples who don't even talk to each other when they get in the house like leave the other thing too actually a lot of people build homes with these people and that's when, when kids come into play you bought a house together y'all bought an asset a, ass, a house is an asset you did something so permanent with somebody so now you feel like you can't leave them because then if you leave them where the fuck you gonna live now you gotta get a new you can't afford your own damn house you might have to get an apartment but then you sign paperwork with dude both of y'all had to pay the mortgage if one of y'all leave he won't pay the, he won't be able to afford the mortgage on his own and then your credit gonna be fucked up so a lot of shit play a key role in just knowing when it's over and why a lot of people don't leave you know some houses you gotta be in a house for 10 years in order for it to be fake paid off by year three y'all already fucking hate each other now you got seven years left on the fucking mortgage. But one of the other things is uh, um, uh, a house is not always a death sentence, honey. You can sell it. You can sell the house. It's sellable. <laughs> it doesn't have to be paid off in full to be sold. To my understanding, it can be foreclosed. Um, but still, you got to pack all that shit up. And it, it is. You gotta think about moving. Moving is so annoying. And like, ugh. It's so much stuff. I could see like with married people. Who the kids gonna go with? Now y'all arguing over custody, bitch. Now y'all gotta pick dates. and Ugh. But if it's bad, figure it out, sis. If it's bad, that I give you some time, though. Like, you're like, yo, I really want to leave him, but you know it's going to take you a year or two to save up some bread to get a new apartment. Fine. Fine. You got to take that L. Unless you got a family member you can stay with. But that's messy. You got the kids, not the kids. Uh-uh. Ugh. Do the work, people. We got to do the work before we get in these relationships. We got to do the work. Okay? And I think that's why sometimes, you know, God does, y'all know me, I, I, I can't really even sit under the table no more. I think that's why we gotta do the work. I think that sometimes things happen in relationships to teach us how to do the work. Like, I think God wants us to learn how to do the work. Um, I've been through things with my man and, um, we did the work because it could have ended, but he and I both decided to do the work. That's what's going to show you, can we do this? Because it's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations that you go through in a relationship and you're going to have to figure out, you know. It's so important to figure out if that person is willing to do the work for you because shit might get real. Like what I just said, where... You don't want to get caught up in no bullshit like that because you, you didn't really know who you was jumping into a relationship or a marriage with. Do people change over time? Especially in a marriage? I sure the hell hope not. The fuck? Sometimes, see, cause this podcast can get real long. Things could change a person, right? Yeah, like Brittany Howe. Life is fucking hard, okay? Um... As you get older, what happens? 
deaths. Now your spouse lost their mother, they lost their father, they lost their favorite uncle, they lost their grandma, they lost their grandmother. That could fuck up a person's brain. Now they're an alcoholic. When they drink, they become a different person. Now you're dealing with an alcoholic. How are you going to deal with this alcoholic? How are you going to do the work? How are you going to change him? Can he change? Can he move past the death of his mother? How long is it going to take him to move past the death of his mother? So it's like you got to be able to be with somebody that you can really like just bear with them. Like bear with me. Like. Can you bear with that person and, and their personality and, and like till death do his part? Like when shit get real, can you really like help me? My like the pandemic, people in marriages losing their jobs. Now the breadwinner don't got no money. What the fuck you gonna do? You get what I'm saying? Like now what we gonna do? You gonna hate me? You gonna leave me? Cause I ain't got no fucking money. Now we don't got no money. How are we going to pay the rent? How are we going to pay the mortgage? How are we going to pay the bills? And some people are going to be like, yo, you want some bummy shit? I'm out. Or y'all you, you, can start just arguing, 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 arguing every day. Like, you need somebody that's going to be like, yo, shit is hard, but we're going to figure it out. Or we may not figure it out, and they're going to have to kick us out on our ass together, and we're going to fuck them up. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> like... You need somebody, y'all need a team. Y'all need to be a team. Okay? Like, some people ain't really, really, really willing to do a lot of things you think they'll do when shit get real. You feel me? Like, maybe your parents might get sick. Is that person gonna help you take care of your parents? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you start seeing people true colors. Like, you gotta pay attention to shit like that too. That's hard to pay attention to, but... Because those things happen later on. Like, you could be with somebody at 18. Obviously, their parents won't pass till they're, like, 40. Now they're a whole different person at fucking 40. They're a psychopath. Now what? You know? So. Those are things we don't think about. Um, so, if somebody could take, take you at your worst from the beginning when you a hot-ass mess, you know, stick it out with them. If they want to... Be an idiot. They don't want to shake it with you. They don't want to push through an argument. Say, babe, look, I love you. I know you're mad because I didn't put the paper away. Blase, blase. I don't know. Then, you know. That ain't the one. But ultimately, to me, when you know what's over, it's just like... It's just that connection. It, it, say that now I'm thinking because I thought it was this is gonna be a short one you know I don't want to say that because I went through that because I went through something traumatic me and my now fiance or whatever and I couldn't really like well obviously I moved past it but at the time it was like hard for me to like move forward to the point like the situation made me not like him like, I couldn't find a track. Like, I would cringe when he would touch me. Like, but he wanted to do the work. And clearly, I wanted to do the work because I kept sticking around. But it was some times when I really wanted to give up. And he just kept calling me, talking to me, telling me I'm going to be okay, blah, blah, blah. And things went right back to normal, you know, after a couple of months, you know. I'll share those deets with y'all one day. But, um... That's why I do think you could really lose, like, love and attraction for somebody. Maybe I never really lost the love, though. Maybe the love was always there. But it felt like it wasn't. And, look, it could have easily been over after that. But we fought for each other. He fought for me when I was like, ugh. And it's weird. It's like a mental thing. Like, you got to know. You got to know. You got to know. But I'm pretty sure you know when it's over, though. And that's a finick. It's just like, this shit ain't gonna work. <laughs> this shit ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. Like, you just gotta know when it ain't gonna work. And, and, and that communication is not there. Like, he's just not really putting his, his best foot forward. Like, 
you not really putting your best foot forward. Like, you not really trying. You just, like, kind of dragging yourself to the finish line. Like, like you just dragging. You just dragging the relationship, basically. Like, you know when you fighting. Like, and you know when you tired. But, yeah. I hope, I hope it all passed together. This topic is deeper than I think it is. But yeah, I hope it will pass together. I hope you guys are going to get through this quarantine. I hope that the world, forget just us. I hope that America, I don't know, wherever you at watching or listening, I hope that we get through this. And we will. Life is going to be very different. I'm curious to see. Um, but yeah, I will see you boys when next week. Same time. Same channel, same podcast. Break sex. See you guys next week.